For this chapter on quadratic equation, we will only use the complete the square method to find our maximum and minimum point. Of course, there are other ways that you can find a maximum or minimum point, all right, which um, you may learn in other chapters. So, but for now, we'll just focus on complete the square. Before we can even learn how to complete the square, the first of all, got to know what is a square. I mean, square is not the shape, a square shape as compared to a rectangle or triangle. No, no, not that square. We're talking about a square, perfect square number, like for example, 16, which is 4 square, um, 36, which is 6 square, and so on. While in numbers, it is rather obvious or easy to spot a perfect square, in polynomials, it may not be so easy. Okay, for example, when you take a look at this, well, x squared minus 4x plus 4, I mean, what's so special about this? Well, I hope you remember this formula, or this identity, that a, a plus b in a bracket square is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So, this left hand side is a perfect square because, you know, it when you can be it can be square rooted nicely so it's a perfect square this thing here this quadratic expression here is precisely the same as this okay it can be expressed into x minus 2 square so this is actually a perfect square all right you can be square rooted very nicely all right you see a perfect square now complete the square is the process of making a non-perfect square into something like a perfect square okay I mean take a look at this 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 expression this quadratic expression here this is not a perfect square because you can't fit this uh, into this formula I mean just by the look of the 5 you know because uh, you know 5 is not a perfect square so it can never be the b square here okay What's more, it is a negative number, which b squared will never be a negative number. So, at one glance, you should be able to spot that this is not a perfect square. Now, complete the square is to make this into a complete square. Okay, what am I talking about? I mean, you know, you're all seeing stars and squares. Okay, so let's um, go through the steps of completing the square. You may have learned this in uh, elementary maths already, so just uh, very quickly go through this. First of all, all right? We have to make sure that the coefficient of x squared is 1. Okay, so that's our first step. Make sure that the coefficient of x squared is 1. In this case, the coefficient of x squared is 1. So you can go on to the second step. So this will be equal to, what, what do we do for the second step? Well, we just copy the same thing for x, but we have to add in. Okay, we take the coefficient of x, which is a 4, we divide it by 2 and we square it. Now, but you know very certainly that, you know, this expression, you cannot just add in any numbers you like. You know, you just, you can't just add in the number and, and say that they are the same, they are equal. Obviously, they won't be the same, isn't it? So what you do is you add in this number and then you minus away the same number. Okay? And of course, you have to, you know, copy down everything. So you, you realize that this is exactly the same as this, okay? Uh, nothing much. You just added something and you minus away the same thing. So it's back to square one. You know, it's really nothing serious there. But what you have done here, successfully change these three terms into a perfect square. You may not notice, but you see that this, this is a two square. Okay, 2 squared, which is your b squared. Alright, now this is the 2. Now, a has to be x, so you know that it has to be 2 multiplied by something, multiplied by x. So, of course, 4 is 2 multiplied by 2. And this 2, this 2 here, in the middle one, is the b that we're talking about. Okay, so, and therefore, this 2 is the b square here, 2 square. Okay, so I hope you see the link here. So this is the, the 2, uh, I mean this is our x, a is our x, so a is x square and uh, 2x, and therefore our b has to be the 2 
and so happen that this is also 2 2 squared which is 4 okay so you can see very clearly that this three terms now becomes a perfect square okay this three terms now becomes x plus 2 square so these three terms becomes a perfect square minus of of course we, we, we cannot forget about the numbers behind right so this will be a 2 so 2 square will be a 4 so we have um, at the back minus 4 minus 5 which will be minus 9 So here we go. This is what complete the square is all about. Now, then you may ask, why do we have to do complete the square? I mean, what purpose does it serve? I mean, what good does it do? Well, first of all, complete the square makes it possible for you to make x the subject. I mean, for example, okay, when you have this, use this quadratic expression as an example. Uh, let's say you have x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals to 0. And you are interested in making x a subject. That means to say you want to know x is equal to what? Okay. Now, because you have x squared and x, it is impossible for you to make x a subject directly this way. So only by completing the square, after you completed the square, you say that, well, you know, you know that x plus 2 square minus 9 is equal to 0. So therefore, x plus 2 square is equal to 9. And then you can square both sides. You get plus and minus. It doesn't matter. The whole idea is that you can square both sides. And you have gotten, of this, got, gotten rid of this 2. And you'll be only left with x plus 2. And you can make x a subject from here. Okay, so this is one very practical use for complete the square. Well, I think we need a little bit more space here. Okay, well, secondly, complete the square helps us to find the maximum or minimum turning point. Okay, a maximum point of a quadratic equation or a minimum point of a quadratic equation. How does it do it? Okay, then this is uh, what you have to try to understand. It's very useful. Okay, let us use back the same example that we got up here. So x squared plus 4x minus 5. We know that x squared, minus four, uh, x squared plus 4x minus 5 can be written as x plus 2 squared minus 9. Okay, they are equal. They are the same. As you can see in the working here, they are exactly the same. So the only difference is that this is in a complete square form, and this is in a expanded form. When you expand this bracket out, you will end up with this as well. All right. So how does completing the square helps us to find the maximum point or a minimum point? Let us scroll a little bit. We need a little bit of space here. Right. Now, what do we know about this quadratic curve? Now, this quadratic curve has to be a U-shaped curve, isn't it? Okay, it has to be a happy face because this is a positive x squared. Now, therefore, we know that there exists a lowest point. Okay, a minimum point. Now, from, from by looking at the left-hand side, it, it is not that apparent, not that easy to figure out, you know, how, how is this going to help you see where is the lowest point. However, if you study closely uh, the, the completed the square form, okay, at the right hand side here, it can be quite easily be told that, you know, where is the minimum point. How are we going to figure it out? Now, pay attention to this. You know that, you know, no matter what x you put in, Okay, for this term here. Alright, because this is a perfect square, no matter what x you put in, it will always be positive. You can put in x equals to 10, it will get positive number. You can put in x equals to negative 100, it will still be positive number because it is a perfect square. So no matter what x you throw in, this will always, always be a positive number. Now, this positive number will have to minus away 9. 
okay now since we are looking for the lowest value all right remember that this this value here is supposed to give us the lowest value isn't it so the lowest possible value so you will want it to be as small as possible okay this value to be as small as possible so how small can it go well think about this since this is always a positive number let's say you know a positive number like um, 2 2 minus 9 will give us negative 7 okay now is this negative 7 the lowest value we can ever go no 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 why no well because you know that x can I mean this this perfect square here can be 1 right so when it is 1 you have 1 might you go even lower okay you get negative 8 Alright, the idea here is that this perfect square will never, never be negative, and therefore the lowest value we can go will be zero. Okay, so when this perfect square is a zero, you will have gotten your lowest possible value for the quadratic function. Okay, and that will be negative nine. So what this tells us here is that the lowest point here is a negative nine. All right. No matter what x you throw in, it will never be lower than negative nine. It will never be. Okay, it will. The most you can go will be negative nine. All right. And when does it happen? I mean, when do you get a negative nine answer as the lowest point? When? When do you get that? Well, when this perfect square is a zero, isn't it? And how to make this perfect square zero? Well, when x is negative two. When your x is negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 will give you a 0. So 0 square, you get 0. 0 minus 9, you get minus 9. Alright? So from here, you can figure out that, you know, hey, when x is negative 2, alright, your y will be negative 9. And this will be the minimum point. Okay? The coordinates of the minimum point. Alright, you will never go lower than negative 9. And no matter what x you throw in, you will always be higher. Okay, as shown in the graph. That is why it is a U-shaped curve. Alright, so this is what complete the square does. Uh, what is the use of completing the square?